Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and I am wearing today's project. I've made this cowl scarf, which is a great neck warmer alternative for a cold weather when you don't want all the fabric of a scarf. It has this leather, which you can use vinyl or pleather as well, accents and snaps so you can customize how high it comes up on your neck. And because this is basically a one size pattern, it makes a great gift for anyone on your list, women, men, even kids, depending on what fabrics you choose. Now, there are a couple of skills that we're going to be using to make this project, including working with leather and how to set snaps that I'm not gonna cover in this video because I have other videos specific to tips on sewing leather and how to set snaps. And I will be linking those below if you need help with those skills. Otherwise, meet me back at the camera and let's take a look at the materials and how to make this. Now over here, I have the essential materials. You have to have these for the project. And that is, um, the fabric for one side and the contrasting fabric for the other side. These are going to be cut to 9 inches wide by 24 inches long for the size that I am making. Then you need the material for the ends. I'm using leather. You can use vinyl, pleather, um, pretty much anything that you want on the ends as long as the edges of it don't fray because there isn't a finished edge on this. And then you need snaps to put this together. And I like this particular brand of heavy duty snaps and I'll put a link below. I've tried lots of different ones. These are the ones I feel like work the best so they're generally the ones I buy. And if you don't have the one that is a kit, you do need to buy the snap setting tool. Now, these are optional supplies that are gonna make your life easier. I use this clear ruler all the time and what I used it for in this particular case was to help me place where I wanted the um, snap holes that I punched into this. So I punched these in ahead of time. You can see the holes that I've punched in here. And to do that, I used this little mini punch set and a mallet and a cutting board. Now, you can also just snip with scissors. I just find this really convenient because what it allowed me to do was fold this in half and punch a hole straight through both sides at the same time. So I'm sure that they line up. With scissors, you have to do markings and then um, do it and make sure that they match up on both sides. This is just really clean and efficient to do it this way. I also used my um, chalk marking pen to mark where I wanted the holes to be. And you can measure your holes out, but you can also, if you don't want to measure and then do the math and figure out how to evenly space them, I love this Simflex gauge and I just figured out I wanted four buttonholes and then I spread it apart and evenly spaced my buttonholes. I knew I wanted the two on the ends an inch away from the edge. That's where I used my ruler and then I marked those out. Um, embroidery scissors are going to come in handy when we get to poking the holes through the fleece to put the snaps in through here. And then of course, since I am using leather, I am gonna be using my rolling presser foot to sew up the edges of that. Now the first step is going to be taking our edges here. We're gonna fold these in half, right sides together, and then stitch right across that short edge. Now I am using my rolling presser foot here. And I'm increasing my stitch length. I'm just gonna stitch right across there. Okay, I'm going to back stitch and then cut my thread. And I will repeat this on each edge of the leather. Okay, once you have all four ends sewn together, you're going to want to trim off the seam allowance, get it down to about a quarter inch, and then turn this piece right side out. And then to help with the bulk here at the edges, it can be helpful to just take your mallet and let me move some of these things that are gonna rattle. 
Okay, take your mallet and then just hammer the leather here to help it kind of thin out and it's going to make it easier to work with later. By the way, this doesn't just work with leather. Any thick fabric that you're working with, you can use a mallet to help hammer down seams and thin them out. Um, just be careful not to hammer so enthusiastically that you create holes in your material. But that is why I keep a mallet in my sewing room so that I can do things like that. Once I have that done, I'm going to set this aside for now. Once you have done the two edge pieces, then it's time to sew the center section. So you want to take your inner and your outer fabric and you want to place them right sides together. And what we're going to do is just sew down these two long edges. Now because this fleece does have some stretch and I don't want stitches popping later, I'm going to be using a very long narrow zigzag stitch. So I have my zigzag length set to 3.5 and I have the width set to 2. Use a half inch seam allowance to sew. Once you've sewn down those two long edges, you can go ahead and trim these seam allowances down to a quarter inch as well. After those seam allowances are all trimmed, then what you want to do is turn the whole tube right side out. Okay, you could press this, but if you're going to press fleece, realize that you need to use a low temperature setting and you need to use a pressing cloth because it is easy to melt it if you use too high a temperature on your iron. So instead of using the iron to press it, I actually prefer myself to finger press it. So I just kind of work the seams out and sort of press those edges myself. All right, now we just need to stitch the edges on. So you want to sandwich your edge inside and make sure that you've got all your layers and that the edges of your leather are meeting up. This is tr the trickiest part or one of the trickiest parts because it is hard to um, make sure that the leather is matching up on both sides and work with all of those layers. So one of the things that can make it easier is to do a basting stitch to baste these two edges together. And I am going to go ahead and do that at this point. If you do choose to do a basting stitch, you want to make sure that you do it right next to the edge so that that stitching ends up getting covered when we put the edging on. The other tricky thing about this is you can't really pin it because you'll leave holes in the leather. So let me show you another trick of what I do to help hold this all together until I stitch it. A lot of times when I am stitching with leather, I recommend using Wonder Clips because they're great and they clip on and they hold things in place. These would work in this situation, but as you've noticed, as far as I can put the clip on, it only is going to go to halfway here. So in that case, I like to pull out binder clips because these can hold further on to the leather and not make a hole in them. So what I'm going to do is push my edge in there. I'm going to make sure my leather's all lined up. I'm going to put a binder clip on it. And that's going to hold to the middle just like a wonder clip, but then I have these other edges that I can push in and it'll hold all the way to the edge until I get there to stitch. Now I'm going to take this to the machine where I've switched back to my brown thread, my rolling presser foot, and my leather needle, and I've lengthened the stitch. And we need to top stitch this in place. Now just to be safe, 
since you have you're stitching through all these layers we're not going to stitch as close to the edge as we can because that leaves us with a chance of missing the back side and we want to make sure that we're going through all four layers so I'm actually going to start a little further in and this is another trick with um, thicker fabric like this is to start a little further in and then we're going to um, take a stitch or two and then we're going to back stitch to get to the edge does this mean that we're going to be stitching over the same place a couple times yes um, but I prefer that to having a tangle of thread at the beginning. And as always, you can pick up your presser foot and hand feed. Also handy, you may have seen me do this earlier, I like to use like a point turner or an awl to help guide fabric under. until I can get a hand in the back and help guide it that way too. All right, once you have that stitched in place, you want to trim off the loose threads and then repeat that process on the other side of your tube. Once you have your leather sewn on each end of the cowl, then all that's left to do is insert the snaps. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not gonna get into all the details about how to do that. There is a link below specifically about snaps. What I am gonna show you though is a suggestion here um, for working with fleece, particularly if you're working with something furry like the backing that I used here. First of all, a really sharp pair of embroidery scissors can be helpful. Also an awl can be helpful if you have one of those. But I like to use the point to kind of poke through. You can see it starting to come through on the other side where I've already got the hole in the leather. And then wiggle it around. And then because this is so thick, the stuff we're working on, I also like to take these embroidery scissors and kind of cut any fur out. Be careful not to cut the leather, but I cut any fur out and then I like to work it through from the opposite direction as well. Um, and then again, any fur that is coming through that hole, I try to cut it out of the way to um, keep it from creating issues when I put the snap in. So like when I put the snap through there now, I'm able to really kind of squish all the fabric down because these snap um, shanks are really not that long. So you kind of have to do this to get everything squished in there properly. And so that when you, you attach the other side of the snap that it has something to grip onto. There we go. It also helps if you have a little bit of fingernails when you're doing this so that you can kind of press and you can feel all around there. In fact, there's more fur here that I think I'm gonna cut off before I install this snap. There we go. So I can see my shank there and um, just be really intentional about squishing everything down as far as possible and really trying to give that metal something to grip onto when you hammer it in place. But like I said, there's a whole other video about how to install these kinds of snaps. So that link is below. Once you are finished hammering all your snaps on, this is what it will look like. And then you have your edges that you can snap together or not, depending on how you like to wear your cowl.